Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another Old School RuneScape video. And I'm gonna have to be honest with you guys, this is my second time recording this. The first time around, the introduction part was also 4 minutes long, and I think that's okay for the first video to kind of give you more context, but for all the following videos, I really don't think it's necessary, so we are going to speed run through the introduction parts that I usually have in my videos. Most importantly, if you like this video, we have a lot of content like this on the channel, so a subscription with notifications on would be really appreciated, and also so please like this video only if you find any of these tips to be useful for you or for players who are in the mid game. Just like my previous videos, here we have today's structure. First we are going to look at a few very quick disclaimers, then we are going to jump into the top 10, and we are going to end the main part of the video with my personal opinion as to what your account should have in order for you to know that you are past the mid game. At the end of the video I'm going to have two very important things, number one, I am going to show you how I gave their winners of a Friday's common contest their bond cash or the bond, and finally, something a lot of people have been asking, we finally have a discord and we also have a channel memberships, so if you are interested in what you could potentially get for your perks by supporting this channel even further, stick around to the end of the video and that will be incredibly helpful. Alright, so let's go ahead and speed run through the disclaimers. Number one, remember that this is just my personal opinion and as an endgame player, I could potentially have missed a couple of things, but this is what we are going to do in the comments in a little bit. Number two, some of the parts in the top 10 are going to have multiple goals and that's because I think they go pretty well together, because putting them separately wouldn't have made much sense. And finally, remember that these are some of the most important things your account should have, and that there's a lot more things you could potentially do, but these are going to give you a very good baseline for your account. Also, this is not specifically for Iron Man, as I did this list with unrestricted accounts in mind, but Iron Man could potentially benefit from these tips as well. Alright, I think that was way better than a 4 minute intro, so with that being said, let's jump into the top 10. Starting off this list, I have the Dragon Scimitar and the Dragon Defender. Now, technically the Dragon Defender is not a weapon, however it goes in the shield slot, but the Dragon Scimitar is going to be able to be obtained after completing the Monkey Madness 1 quest. Now, some people could say that this is fairly difficult, but, uh, you know, because we evolve as players and the better we get at the game, the more efficient we are, and I would actually say that Dra uh, Monkey Madness 1 is going to be a mid-game goal, because honestly, it's really not that difficult now that you think about it. Whenever you unlock your Dragon Scimitar, make sure to get a combined level 130 in both attack and strength, because that is going to give you access to the Warrior's Guild in Bertharp, or Bertharp, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, RuneScape names, you guys know that I have a very difficult time as well as many other people. However, when you get to the Warrior's Guild, you are going to kill the staple animated armor, because it's, I guess, the meta, the most efficient way to get Warrior Guild tokens. You are going to go upstairs to kill Cyclops in order to get your Bronze, Iron, Steel, Black, Mithril, Adamant, and finally Rune Defenders, and once you unlock the Rune Defender, you are going to go to the basement to kill those different Cyclops that are going to have a 1 in 100 chance to give you the Dragon Defender. Both of these things are going to, both of these things, these uh, weapons uh, and items, are going to give you a very nice boost of DPS, in turn that is going to give you more experience per hour, more levels, and uh, well, your account is going to thank you for this incredible upgrade, so in my opinion, this is one of the most important ones. Up next, I am going to group the Slayer Helmet and the Fighter Torso together. Now, technically, these are things that you don't really require anything specific for in terms of questing, I'm pretty sure. Maybe there's something weird with the Slayer Helmet I'm missing, but I'll, I'll just leave it in the screen if that's the case. But uh, the Slayer Helmet, as you we all know, this is going to be the staple item to train Slayer. Remember that the Black Mask, right after you get it, is only going to be uh, in enhancing or giving you the bonus if you train with melee. However, if you take it to Nightmare Zone, it is going to be able to be imbued, and it will give you the bonus whenever you are training magic and ranged. And overall, if uh, you are not training Slayer with a Slayer helmet, well, maybe you are doing something wrong, but <laughs> this is just one of the most important items that you could potentially get. And coming up next, we have, yes, the Fighter Torso. I know many people who complain about this one because, well, we can't really be asked to doing the Defender role, which is my most hated one. But uh, this is going to be a very nice pseudo item for uh, a lot, maybe not a lot, but for a very good bonus of a strength in your chest slot, and honestly, it's going to save you a lot of money if you don't want to buy a Bando's chest plate. Talking about Bando's chest plate, that is going to require level 65 defense, and the torso requires a much lower level, so both of these items are going to be incredibly helpful, along with the previous ones, in order to give you a very nice boost of DPS in your Slayer adventures. For number two, we didn't require anything questing specifically, but 
but number three is going to be the exception. Next I will have the Bearer's Gloves and the Proselyte Armor. What do you need for Bearer's Gloves? Obviously the very iconic recipe for disaster. Whenever you fight or kill or defeat, I guess, the Kulinomancer at the very end of the quest, you are going to have access to the full chest which will sell you the Bearer's Gloves for 130k, which oddly enough after 8 years of the game being out is, going, is still the best in slot gloves for the ranged attack style. I don't know about you guys, but I think we need a little bit more content in that one. And um, yeah, so that is going to give you a very nice bonus for both, uh, well not for both, for all melee, ranged and magic. And next we have the proselyte armor. This is going to be obtained after completing, I believe, the slug menace. I don't have my notes readily available, but that armor is going to be incredibly helpful for slayer trips that require you to pray uh, either melee, magic, ranged, and it is going to make your prayer potions last way longer. Longer, your trips are going to last longer in term your experience is going to be way I was gonna say faster but you're going to get way more experience per hour as you are not going to have to bank that often even max players are using this item in some prayer heavy uh, slayer tasks and that is going to be incredibly useful so get both of these items to make your DPS even better and for your prayer potions to last longer up next we have two items and one little activity if you want to call it that and we are going to have the Fire Cape, the God Cape, and your item imbues in Nightmare Zone. First of all, for the very iconic Fire Cape, remember that you need to kill the biggest and the baddest, maybe not at this point in time in Old School RuneScape, but you need to kill one of the most iconic monsters in the game in the form of TZ Talk Jad. If you complete the Fire Caves, no, the Fight Caves actually, you are going to complete this and you are also going to have a chance at getting the very nice Jad pet. When you have the fire cape, that is going to increase your DPS a whole ton, and you can also go ahead and head to the wilderness to complete the majoring one in order to obtain the god cape. This is going to give you a very nice bonus to your magic attack style. So both of these are essential items you should have. Uh, in the previous episode, we have the Avis accumulator because that one is just one of the most essential ones, especially when training ranged. However, these ones are maybe not crucial, but you can actually wait just a little bit for your account to, to get both of these. And also. Also, speaking about Nightmare Zone, remember that whenever you train this activity, now remember that this is not a Nightmare Zone uh, guide or anything of the sort, but whenever you have enough points, you can imbue things such as your Black Mask, your Rings, and maybe your Ring of Suffering, and just so many things that are going to give your DPS another boost increase. It seems like I am talking a lot about DPS uh, boosting and everything, but all of these are designed to give you a very nice boost in your damage, just so you get even more combat experience per hour whenever you are training. And just like the previous video, tip number 5 is going to be completely up to you guys. What do I want you to do in the comments? Leave me your number 1 mid-game tip and in 24 hours the comment with the highest number of likes is going to get one bond. I did not mention this in the past, but please remember to include your RuneScape name, because that is going to save us a lot of time. In the previous one, I was like, okay, leave me your comment, and then I will ask for your RuneScape name, but I guess we can cut this and make sure to add my RuneScape name, El Chaos, as you are seeing it on screen right now, and if you win, if you are selected, I will contact you to record you, and I will of course give you your bond. So get thinking, and give me your number one mid-game tip for every single person reading the comments below. And if you guys are also here for the tip, make sure to go ahead and uh, you know go down to the comments and uh, get even more information from my RuneScape friends. So up with the next one. Number six and number seven are going to be sort of like a rehash, like a recycle of the previous one, but these are honestly very important and something you should never miss out on or never skip on. So first at number six I have making your farm runs even more efficient. In the previous episode I was like you know get to the farm runs or get to the farm patches just the way you want in order to get your herb patches, your allotments, or your flowers, but this tip is actually making you, or I guess giving you the idea, the tip of making your farm runs even faster, so you have to spend less time on your farm runs and then more time doing whatever activity you are grinding. You should unlock things that give you access to more patches or even give you faster teleports just so you cut down in these times and you can get training more efficiently. And related to farming, tip number seven is going to be unlocking the second tier of the farming guild, which I'm pretty sure requires level 65 farming. Now this is, I believe, 
the most essential part of the farming guild as a whole, let me tell you why. In the first tier we only have a flower patch, an allotment patch, and a one of those cactus patches, which is, you know, kind of nice, you have access to the contracts, but then tier 2 is going to give you access to the Hespori. Now if you don't know, I have said this in some previous videos, the Hespori, whenever you fight it, is going to give you access to some very useful seeds that you can plant in order to enhance the ability of your patches. You are going to get the Atta seed, which is going to give you more yield out of your herbs, the Iasaur seed, which is going to decrease the chance for your things to decrease to uh, for <laughs> for your things to catch disease. And the next one is the Chrono seed, which is going to give all of your patches a chance to skip on a farming cycle. So potentially you could make this a little bit faster, I guess, but since they are not synced, then it's going to be kind of awkward because then they are not going to be all synced together and then maybe some of them are not going to be ready. However, if you focus on Iasaur and Atta seeds, with the Hespori you are going to be good to go. And also you have access to another uh, tree patch which is going to give you even more experience per day. So get to the farming guild tier 2 and start I guess killing the Hospori for those nice seeds. For tip number 8, we are going to go back to questing, and this time around I am going to have two very nice unlocks for you guys, as well as one very cheap item you can get in order to save a lot of, uh, maybe not a lot of money, but, you know, it is going to be extremely convenient. First of all, we are going to do the quest of the King's Ransom, as well as the little activity after the quest, which is called the Knight's Training Grounds, I believe, and with either 60 or 70 prayer, as well as 60 uh, or 70 defense, you are going to unlock the prayers chivalry and the piety as you all know we only have one uh, prayer spell book or one prayer book as i'm actually thinking about runescape 3 and the very nice curses but this time around the piety is going to give you an obscene amount of uh, dps damage and well you guys uh, may think i am being obsessed with dps in this video but i guess this is pretty much what it is all about right so after piety you are also going to uh, go for the ancient spellbook and at this time around if you are following the tips right as this list tells you the ancient spells should potentially be unlocked because desert treasure is a requirement for the recipe for disaster so if you don't use this spellbook quite often you can actually use it for slayer tasks that have you go into multi-target zones and it is going to give you a ridiculous amount of experience per hour you can go to the catacombs of Korend and you can actually attack all of the little dust devils and pile them together in order to burst them or barrage all of them and that is just basically going to uh, give you the chance to finish one of your dust devils task in a matter of minutes so this one is going to be incredibly useful and finally speaking about prayers i am going to give you guys the tip or the option to go to the grand exchange and uh, buy a torn prayer in order to unlock the i don't remember the name of this uh, prayer you guys are seeing it on screen but with this prayer your boosts in levels thanks to potions are going to last for 50 percent longer it is going to give you more out of your potions and in turn you are going to spend even and less on potions because you are going to be potted up most of the time on your either tasks or whatever you are doing. Tip number nine is kind of a weird one and the reason for that is because I don't see a lot of people suggesting this but for the mid game you should potentially look into getting either one or two 99s for your account. You can go for some really, really easy and quick ones like cooking, fletching, some people get fire making in Winter Toad, and there are some other ones that are not as difficult or as tedious to get as some people may think, like for example, magic you can do through High Alking or through the Lunar Spellbook, or you can go for some very quick ones in the form of construction and crafting, and the skill keeps are going to be incredibly useful for your, for your accounts. If you guys watched my top, my uh, uh, tier list for all of the skill capes you know that uh, both of these skill capes are in the s tier some of my favorite ones and honestly not only the skill cape perks but the items themselves the trimmed prayer and not just a prayer the trimmed skill cape is going to give you a very nice bonus in the defense style but it's also going to give you a plus prayer bonus so with a proselyte armor your prayer is going to last so much longer and it is going to be a very useful item to have and finally number 10 is also something i don't see a lot of people talking about but you should find a way to be able to sustain your bond in order for you not to pay those $11 per month to Mr. Jagex. Now, in order to do this at the current price of the bonds, this means that you need to make $10 million per, uh, not dollars, 10 million GP per month in order for you to buy your bonds and then maintain your membership for free. 
If you are not buying the Premier Club every, I believe, November, that applies for both Old School RuneScape as well as RuneScape 3, the way to maintain membership with bonds is actually not too difficult once you get into the mid game when you are making enough money with farming with burden house runs with slayer and maybe with some other things that are both very useful for your account that is that is going to give you a lot of experience per hour as well as giving you a ton of money and profit for your bi-weekly bond so make sure to find a nice way to make your money take some uh maybe not minutes but take some hours away of your week in order to make these 10 million gp per uh, I was going to say week, but every 10, uh, 10 million GP per month in order for you to maintain that membership and so you don't have to give Jagex those $11 per month. And now, in my very personal opinion, how do you know when your account has left the mid game and is ready to take on the late game challenges? Well, I think you should have all of the experienced quests ready, as well as just a few master quests that are not as difficult, but I guess uh, when Jagex made them, they were like, oh, it's going to be impossible for people to do this. But then, you know, uh, in the current age, uh, a lot of the master quests are not going to be as difficult, but just if you want to complete a few of them, that would be very helpful. You should also have at least base 60s or 70s stats, so you guys need to do that uh, nice runecrafting if you want to leave the late game. And finally, of course, you need to have completed all of the medium, as well as some of the useful hard diaries. Now, I'm not saying that you need specifically all of them, but there are some very useful ones in the hard tier, like uh, the Kandarin hard diary, which is going to give you the best agility training uh, until level 90 and 92, and maybe some other useful ones that I'm not exactly thinking of at the moment so yeah that's how you know you are through the mid game all right i hope you guys enjoyed the top 10 but don't leave just yet we are going to have two very important parts of the video that i think are much better for me to have at the end first of all i'm going to show you how i gave the winners of friday's comment question both microsoft and razor x their prize money first of all razor x uh, was given 5 million gp which was you know slightly more than a bond but i guess 5 million gp is a pretty good deal and finally microsoft asked me to give the bond to his ultimate Iron Man in Lumbridge. Thank you guys very much for your comments. And also, very important, in Monday's video, I asked you guys to leave me your number one tip for the early game goal. And the comment with most likes was going to be the winner. And congratulations to Matical, hopefully I am pronouncing your uh, name correctly. He uh, was also contacted, and I am going to give him his bond pretty soon, and that will be shown in Friday's video. And finally, for the moment we've been waiting for, it is time to sell out. No, I'm just kidding, but... A lot of people have been asking for a Discord both on videos or whenever I stream. It's a very common uh, it's a very common thing for people to ask me, and I'm happy to announce that we finally have a Discord. I'll try to think of ways that we can potentially maybe do some community events and everything, but the most important part is that we now have channel memberships. If you guys are familiar with Twitch, this is basically a subscription to one channel. In Twitch, you have a tier of subscriptions. I believe tier 1 is $5, tier 2 is like 10 or 15 and finally tier 3 is going to be a $25 per month subscription. On YouTube, this is pretty similar. However, there is a catch. For every tier that you subscribe to, you are going to be able to get different perks for whatever tier you paid for. Here in uh, my little nice channel memberships, you have the rune tier at $3, and you are going to be given credits at the end of my videos as well as a special Discord role. For every consecutive tier, you are going to be given the perks for the previous tier, so that is going to act like as a cumulative, uh, if that's even how you pronounce it, like a reward. So next, we have the Berserk tier at five dollars per month i am going to be your personal trainer if you ever have any questions as to what to do from one to from one to 99 and you don't really want to use my guides or anyone else's guides i am going to coach you in order to get you from one to whatever level you are going to uh, set uh, your goal to in the most efficient way possible next we have the dragon tier at ten dollars a month and i am going to be your video advisor first i am going to tell you maybe what you could do with your uh, with your channel your titles your thumbnails your descriptions and basically Basically, I am going to be like a little teacher uh, on YouTube if you guys want to start your own channel and your own videos. Up next, we have the Nazi tier at $15 a month, and you are going to be able to access these uncut commentary 
files, so you can, I guess, laugh at the, you know, little struggles of me repeating the same thing over and over for like five minutes and me still not be able to get it, and that is, I believe that's going to be much fun. But the big boy subscription is going to be the Infernal subscription at $25 a month, and this is going to be big because I am going to be your editing coach, and I am going to help you edit your thumbnails, your videos, and I am going to help you do whatever you need for one video per month, or even, even more if not a lot of people subscribe to this one, but most importantly, you guys are going to have access to my full folders of material when it comes to editing, and you're going to be able to see my Photoshop files, all of the material I use, you're going to be able to see my my Vegas Pro editing, uh, like, I guess, file if you have that little software. So, in return, you are going to get a lot of uh, advice and help from me, and I guess that is a really good thing instead of just telling you, hey, do you want to give me $25 a month? Thank you. So, I am going to be able to give you the most out of whatever tier you want to pay. However, remember that these are not not mandatory whatsoever. I have a stable job, this is only a side thing, and this is only for people who really, really enjoy the content and would like to see even more support for both the videos and on my streams. So thank you guys very much for even considering if that's what you want to do, and um, yeah, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, hopefully you don't get mad at this uh, nice Bodhi sellout part, but you know, if you want uh, credit for your Twitch, your Twitter, your YouTube, and you want me to mention you at the end of the video and even do more, then that would be a really nice benefit for us both. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you on Friday for delayed game goals. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you then. Bup -bup -bup Peace!